You're going to have to speak up because there's some background noise. It's Wednesday the 5th of March. I'm speaking with Councillor Kate Chappell. So, Kate, tonight you've been speaking at the Manchester Certain Future Work in Progress event. What have been your impressions of tonight? Who have you met? Has it been useful for you? Has it been useful for other people? It's primarily a networking event, and yes, it was really useful. I met lots of people who are involved with the steering group, or recently involved, not with the steering group, but the kind of structure of MACF and its various thematic groups and, and parts, or the wider network, who I've not met before at all. And particularly tonight, lots of academics from the universities um, who I've uh, who I've not seen through environmental groups or kind of campaigns in the past. So it's really nice to get to meet the kind of academia side of things. And they've obviously got lots and lots and lots to contribute in terms of expertise for um, all of the MSCF <coughs> bits of work that need to happen. So it's great to meet them. Lovely to see lots of people who I've worked with previously or campaigned with previously. And just amazing to look around the room and see, as I think I mentioned in my speech, just the amount of expertise there in a single room covering so many different fields, all related to climate change, and gives you a real sense of how that working together will we'll be able to make some serious change. Very specifically in, in terms of change, yesterday you were at Neighbourhoods Scrutiny Committee meeting and one of the issues was drainage. Yeah. So what plans does the council have to make sure that drains don't block? Because as Councillor Luffman said, it's very expensive if you don't deal with it quickly. Yeah, we've got 102,000 gullies across the city. Um, we used to have five gully cleaning machines, we've now got one. And if we went round and cleaned all the gullies in a single programme, it would take us 10 years to get round all of them. So we can't, we can't do that at the moment. We're looking to get some more gully cleaning machines. Um, it's much more, well, it's much more cost effective to do preventative maintenance on drains, as Councillor Fulham pointed out, than to fix them when they have blocks. Obviously, there's lots of inconvenience and hazard for residents as well. Um, so we need to invest in some more gully cleaning machines. Um, we've just done a very detailed survey of all of our highways across Manchester, including all of our gullies um, and the condition that they're in. We're getting all of that data together over the next couple of weeks, so we'll have a lot more intelligence on where we need to prioritise our actions. And um, a drainage working group has been set up uh, of councillors and meets for the first time next week and they'll be really focusing on how we need to draw together that intelligence and extra resources to um, programme works and make sure that we don't get flooded gullies all over the city. But, yeah. In your speech, which I'll put up on the internet as well, you mentioned sort of in a year's time, you'd, from your five, um, I think someone should do something list, that in a year's time you'd le like to see solid plastic recycling happen happening. Are there any other, in a year's time, things that you would like to share now? There are hundreds. <laughs> there are hundreds of things I'd love to see in a year's time. I think it's um, it's difficult to work out. I'm still learning about the timing of things, um, getting things done and how long actions take to go through bureaucracy and procedure down to operation and delivery. Um, it seems to be quite a long time. I think that's just the way things work in very big organisations. Um, and that's, that's fine as long as we get it done in the end. The... Um, comment about rigid plastics recycling was um, specifically related to this time next year being the first time that, that we could do that uh, from a waste contract kind of perspective. So um, that's the earliest that we could do that. Um, I, I can't be specific about the number of things I'd like to see happen this, this year. I'm not touching the question, there were just so many. Um, yeah. If people want to get involved in supporting their local communities and supporting the council in doing things, what would what would be your advice? Um, depends what depends what sort of thing. 
it's the, um, I mean, the, there's formal ways of engaging with the council, for example, ward coordination that in, in some wards is open and they really encourage new residents to go to, other wards not. I think um, a really good way for people to improve their own very local area is to become part of a residence association or to set one up. I notice as a councillor that the areas that have residence associations and active ones are a, much easier for us to deliver services to, much easier for us to listen to, um, and, and b, just much better cared for areas where there's more community spirit. So I think residence associations are really, really important. Um, it's not for everyone. There are ways that people can get involved as community guardians. but. I actually think people don't need the council's permission to get involved with anything in the local area. Um, they don't need to be formal structures. They can just knock on doors, get involved, get speaking to the neighbours, organise street parties. I don't think it should be something that's controlled by the council. We can facilitate it, but um, it needs to happen without us. I think other, uh, another really good way of understanding your local area well and supporting it is to become a school governor. Are you a school governor? Yes. And I've learned an awful lot about the local area through through being being a school governor. It's really interesting. Anything else you'd like?